These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Most uh, OCHEM professors don't require you to memorize the, the structures of the sugars, but you should probably know what glyceraldehyde looks like. So this is the smallest sugar. Uh, by the way, do you know what this is called, D or L? D. D, because the stereo center is pointing to the right. So be D glyceraldehyde. And this is what we could call a aldotriose. You see why it's called an aldotriose. Um, aldol, aldo because of the aldehyde group, and trios because there's three carbons. If it just says aldos, does that mean it's six? Like if it just says aldos, that means it's an a, a aldehyde-based sugar, and they haven't told you how many carbons. Okay. Yeah, so just aldos by itself. So this is, this is an aldos. So aldotriose is a type of aldos. Um, and the aldoses are all of the sugars that are based on aldehydes. Because like for one of the questions, they said draw the aldos. Oh, 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 my mistake. I guess um, aldose must be a specific sugar. Let's see if I can find I it at the table. Uh, are you sure they said D-aldose? Something. Oh, Maybe they said something like uh, D-allose or D-altrose? No, it's definitely aldose. Hmm. Did they say draw A D-aldose? Draw L altrose. Oh, altrose. Ah, there you go. So we would just have to memorize all those sugars? Oh no, mm -hmm. it's in the back. I think they're going to give you the structures. They give us, oh. They'll probably give us yeah. D, and then we just have to move right. into L. Right. Okay, sorry. Continue. So it looks like they didn't say aldose, right? Okay. Yeah, but if they did say aldose, that would just be a general name for aldehyde based sugars. Uh, okay, now um, this is called erythros. Is this D or L? D. Now what matters is that the, the standard way to write these is to write the is to put the carbonyl at the top of the Fisher projection. The standard way to put these is the carbonyl at the top of the Fisher projection, and then whether it's D or L only depends on the bottom stereo center. Whether it's D or L only depends on the bottom stereo center. If the hydroxy is pointing to the right for the bottom stereo center when the carbonyl is on the top, then that would be a D. carbonyl at the top and then the bottom stereo center. By the way, what does the CHO stand for? Alcohol. It's an aldehyde group, of course. This would be D3Os. So what way does D3Os rotate plane polarized light, clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, one, one way. I mean, clockwise. That was a trick question. Do you remember back when we were talking about R and S? We talked about how R and S don't tell you how something rotates plane oh. polarized light. Um, even though R kind of means clockwise and S means counterclockwise, those refer to the clockwise or counterclockwise of atomic numbers. They have nothing to do with any physical facts. D stands for dextrorotatory and L stands for levorotatory, but those are just historical curiosities. This does not mean that it rotates light clockwise, and L doesn't mean that it rotates light counter counterclockwise. Remember, the only way to tell how something rotates light is to do the experiment. All right, so this doesn't tell us that it rotates light. Now, it actually turns out that in the book, they said this was D minus 3Os. Well, that tells you how it rotates light. So it turns out that when you do the experiment, this rotates light counterclockwise. So the plus and the minus tell you how it rotates light. The D and the L have nothing to do with how it rotates light. So again, they just have to tell us. 
pretty much. Although, which way would l 3 rotate? Like, so they don't have to tell you l 3 because they told you this one and you can figure it out from that. But they have to give you something that you can figure out the new molecule from. Minus means the left, it turns it to the left. Minus means counterclockwise. And plus means counterclockwise. Clock. Let's try again. Minus means counterclockwise and plus means clockwise. Okay. That's right. Plus means clockwise, minus means counterclockwise. And let's not even worry what the D and the L stand for because those are just historical curiosities. D and L are just conventional notations. D means that the bottom stereo center is pointing to the right, and L means the bottom stereo center is pointing to the left, and that has nothing to do with how it rotates light. So if this is D3S, what would be the name for this compound where the hydroxy has moved to the left? But we haven't changed the name. That was a mean trick question. I was trying to get you to fall into the trap. Remember that L3S is the enantiomer of this. Well, how do you get enantiomers by reversing both stereocenters? The only way to get the enantiomer is by reversing both stereocenters. That was a mean trap, which I really pushed hard to get you to fall into. That's because it's one of the favorite traps of instructors. Instructors love this trap. Um, you don't get the L form by only reversing the bottom carbon. You don't get the L form by reversing only the bottom carbon. You have to reverse all the stereocenters. Remember that enantiomers have opposite configuration of all stereocenters. So this is not the enantiomer of this. In fact, you can tell that this is the enantiomer of this, isn't it? Because these do have opposite configuration at both stereocenters. These do have opposite configurations at both stereocenters. L erythros. Yeah, so this would be L erythros. So let's write down uh, let's say I was going to do L three O's. If this is D three O's, which side should the hydroxy be on up here for L three O's? On the right. Because that reverses this stereo center. And where should the hydroxy be here? On the left. Of course otherwise it wouldn't be L. So this is L three O's, which does have opposite configuration at both stereo centers. Like yeah, why is that such a tempting trap? Well, people get two different ideas confused. I was just saying that when you're figuring out whether something is D or L, you should only focus on the bottom stereo center. But and then people start to think that they should always focus on the bottom stereo center for everything. Well, no. If you, if you want to know whether a molecule is D or L, you focus on the bottom stereo center. But if you want to focus on what the relationship is between two pictures, you have to focus on all the stereo centers. Um, so again, this molecule here um, is not the enantiomer of this one because they don't have opposite configurations of all the stereocenters. In fact, what is the relationship between these? They're diastereomers. Sugars have lots of diastereomeric relationships. Wait, remember that. The relationship between which two? Oh, these are diastereomers. Because remember, did we talk about this in the first term? Diastereomers have the same configuration at some stereocenters and opposite configuration at other stereocenters. Diastereomers have same configuration at some stereocenters and opposite configuration at some stereocenters. Well, that's the relationship between these two on the right. Um, they, these both have the same configuration at the top stereocenter and opposite configuration at the bottom stereocenter, so they're diastereomers. Incidentally, um, when you only differ at one stereocenter, those are also called epimers. I don't know if you heard that term in class, epimers. That's a type of diastereomer. An epimer is a di I'm sorry? When you only differ at one stereocenter. That's right. An epimer is the type of diastereomers when you only differ at one stereocenter. So those are also epimers. So the, the key point here is to get the L form of a sugar, it's not enough just to reverse the bottom stereocenter. To get the L form of the sugar, you have to reverse all the stereocenters. On the other hand, if you do only reverse the bottom stereocenter, you will get an L sugar. It just won't be the L form of the sugar that you started with. That's a little a little confusing. By the way, uh, if this is an aldo trios, what type of compound is this? 
Aldo, one, two, three, four, tetraos. Yeah, Aldo tetras. I guess these are all Aldo tetrases. 